Hello friends, today we are going to see certain important questions from the previous year question papers. I have selected almost 5 years of question paper from RGHS University. So every day we will be discussing about the important questions, repeated questions. So here are certain questions. Here can, you can see here. The first question is define pneumonia and they have asked the classification of pneumonia based on the causative organism and they have asked for the pathophysiology of pneumonia medical and nursing management of pneumonia so we will see about pneumonia first as you, as you can see the the definition of uh, pneumonia given by Indian P Academy of Pediatrics so pneumonia is defined as the inflammatory process involving the lungs, parenchyma and the second definition is taken from the uh, textbook of Marlowe. It is, it, is, it is the inflammation with the consolidation means um, where the lungs are getting uh, becoming converted to a solid exudate. Okay, so that is called as consolidation. So it is inflammation with consolidation of the parenchymal cells of the lungs and this definition was given by Marlowe Reddy. So these are the two uh, definitions. So whenever they are asking for some definitions, try to write minimum of two definitions with the name of the person who had given that definition. So second here they have asked about the classification based upon the causative organism. So based upon the causative organism, pneumonia is classified into viral pneumonia, viral pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia and mycoplasm pneumonia. It's also called as primary atypical pneumonia. So this is according to the causative organisms. Now we'll see in detail about this causative organisms. So for bacterial pneumonia it is usually caused by pneumococcus streptococcus staphylococcus and hemophilus influenza these are the common microorganisms causing pneumonia in children and for viral it is respiratory syncytical virus rsv it is most common virus affecting the children and influenza virus chickenpox and measles virus can also cause pneumonia in children And you can see this fungal infections or mycotic pneumonia is usually caused by monoliasis and histoplasmosis. And other causes for pneumonia, you can see this aspiration of amniotic fluid in case of newborns or aspiration of any other food or foreign bodies and vomitors and chemicals in case of older children. Next, as they have asked about the pathophysiology here. So, um, see here, when the organism reaches the periphery of the lungs, it starts giving a reactive edema, causing the proliferation of the small organisms and they start involving the lobes and these lobes undergoes a consolidation. I already told you what is consolidation. It is the uh, solid exudate that is formed over the lungs along with the the deposition of the leukocytes, fibrin, RBCs, edema and fluid and resulting in pneumococci or bacteria filling the alveoli. Usually the in uh, pathophysiology you can write the three stages of illness that is reactive edema, red hepatization, grey hepatization and resolution. So in the edematous stage that is reactive edema you can see the alveoli is filled with the exudate and bacteria and in the stage of red hepatization red hepatization you can see that presence of erythrocytes and also the bacteria is filling up the filling up the alveoli and in the next stage you can see the grey hepatization where the erythro erythematous Alveoli is replaced by the uh, fibrin deposition, so uh, resulting in the extravasation. And next, you can see the stage of dissolution where the macrophages starts to 
or he appear and it starts to taking out the debris and the bacteria getting cleared by this macrophages so that is why it is called as the stage of resolution next we will see the clinical manifestation as high fever you can see high fever you can see restlessness and also grunting and flaring nasal nasal bow nasal flaring will be there and also you can see the retraction of the intercostal and subcostal areas tachypnea is there where the breath rate is greater than 50 breaths per minute and tachycardia is there cough and dyspnea anoxia is there and usually the child refuses to take feet followed by vomitings so these are the common clinical manifestations that you can see in children in case of pneumonia and you can see the diagnostic evaluation is uh, by physical examination is by physical examination that that is you can see the tachypnea tachycardia is there and also you can see there is a when you are doing a percussion over the chest you can see some dullness you can feel the dullness over the chest and it can also uh, show that auscultation reveals the wrong keel and the cracking sounds will be there and serological examination shows uh, shows um, presence of bacteria virus or IgG or IgM in the serum and WBC counts is usually elevated for more than 15,000 cells and complete blood picture may be necessary to identify the sepsis. So the medical management of pneumonia is usually pneumonia is managed on an outpatient basis but if at all if the child is having so the severe illness then hospitalization is needed but usually it is managed on an outpatient basis only with all types of supportive care with all types of supportive care follow-up and usually oral cortimaxazole amoxicillin and cefaxel is given for five to seven days and also we need to frequently assess for the clinical status and see to that if the child is getting deteriorated or not if the child is getting admitted to the hospital, then the inpatient management is amphicillin is usually given. Amphicillin is given along with cephalosporins for infants below 2 months and amoxicillin septioxone is given for children more than 2 months. And erythromycin and clary, um, clarifromycin followed by these two medicines and is given for 10 days. And nursing management is assess the child and determine the causative organisms. Control fever, maintain patent airway, provide humidified oxygen if necessary, positioning of the child with the follower's position to help in breathing and monitor state, the respiratory status and vital signs, administer antibiotics as ordered, promote rest and support and give educations to the parents and also try to prevent the complications. So these are the important nursing care that we give to the child suffering from pneumonia. The first question was uh, pneumo about pneumonia and we have seen what is pneumonia and the next question is about infective endocarditis causes clinical manifestation and pathophysiology and also the nursing management they have asked now we'll see about infective endocarditis so infective endocarditis is a serious bacterial or any uh, infections affecting the endocardium of the heart And particularly the art valves are getting affected here. So infective endocarditis is a serious infection affecting the endocardium of the heart, particularly the heart valves. And it generally occurs in patients with altered or abnormal head, heart architecture and also because of exposure to bacteria. Next, we will see the etiology. As I already told you, it is mainly caused by bacteria. And uh, sometimes it can also be because of uh, non-bacterial non endocarditis caused by viruses, fungi and other microbiological agents. So, as I told you, I have shown you in the question, they have asked about the pathophysiology. So, what happens uh, in um, infective endocarditis is that you can see here there is a variations in the blood flow when whenever the the pressure in the blood flow is increased 
it can result in the defect resulting in endocarditis and this turbulent flow traumatizes the vascular endo endothelium and also you can see that uh, because of the damage caused by caused in the endothelium it can result in the initiation of the lesions and once this damage has occurred then the bacteria and other viruses starts invading the damaged surface resulting in the adherence of the bacteria and the colonization in that particular damaged area okay and also you can see that not only the damaged area but the bacteria and other if, uh, microorganisms starts invading the wall leaflets and also it can cause in further infected vegetations means the vegetations are nothing but the deposition of fibrins platelets and other bacterial modifications over that particular area so first thing is there is an changes in the pressure of the blood which causes the trauma to the endothelium okay and then because of the trauma there is a lesion and after that lesion the bacteria starts invading that place resulting in the attachment and the colonization of the bacteria to that place and eventually you can see that infected area is being covered by the vegetation so who are at risk of developing this endocarditis bacterial endocarditis so whenever we undergo certain procedures like dental manipulations or it may be because of any dental disease and it may be because of extra cardiac infections and also any uh, any procedures like urinary tract catheterization iv infusions cardiac surgeries and injections use of drugs and non apparent reasons so this is the predisposing factor for a child to get the bacterial endocarditis so you can see here the clinical features are fever and also other symptoms like fatigue myalgia arthralgia headache chills nausea vomiting heart murmur is usually present and non specific signs like particular and cutaneous manifestations will be there splenomegaly is there ozellars nod ozellars nod these are tender nodules usually located on the pads of the fingers and the toes it is one of the uh, main signs and symptoms of infective endocarditis and the next important uh, clinical manifestation is have written here janeway lesions so janeway lesions are non tender hemorrhagic macules usually present on the palm soles and also the plantar surfaces of the toes so these are the most specific signs of um, this uh, infective endocarditis the other one is the rod spots uh, rod spots are the white hemorrhagic spots usually present on the retina common with subacute bacterial and endocarditis and also you can see the other signs and symptoms are splenomegaly also the other the other organs are also affected with that that is cns lungs retinal vessels usually you can see there is a weight loss and anorexia is usually present so as i already told you there are there are specific signs related to the infective endocarditis that is ocellar nodes i already told you in the previous slide janeway lesions and another one is splinter hemorrhages a splinter hemorrhages are usually the linear lesions present beneath the nails so as you can see here these are the janeway lesions uh, showing a non painful macules usually located on the palms and soles so next is the splinter hemorrhages these are reddish brown lesions usually present under the nail beds so already told you in the previous slides so i've just shown you the image so these are the rod spots and that is the white hemorrhagic spots usually present in the retinal retinal region so these are ocellar nodes these are painful erythematous nodules present on the fingers and toes diagnostic evaluation is blood cultures uh, for uh, identifying the specific organism 
and additional test are CBC, ESR and CRP levels and also renal function test, urine analysis and baseline chemistry test are obtained. Next chest x-ray, sorry, next is chest x-ray and ECG evaluation is done to see the region of ischemia and also arrhythmias and followed by echocardiography. So these are the options for diagnostic evaluations. Then next they have asked for the treatment, uh, management, antibiotic therapy is usually given. Okay. Especially this gent gentamicin, gentamicin is given and vancomycin plus, vancomycin plus is given for um, Vancomycin plus and gentamicin is given for patients without prosthetic valves and when there, were, where there is high risk for uh, or Streptococcus aureus or Enterococcus this will be usually this will this is a treatment for them Vancomycin and gentamicin the duration of the treatment is usually 4 to 6 weeks and also we should again after antibiotic therapy we again we should cross analyze the clinical and laboratory responses and if at all if there is any signs of um, heart failure then uh, they'll go for surgical interventions that is uh, replacement of the aortic and the mitral valve so this is about infective endocarditis so the next question that was asked was for PICU that is PICU stands for Pediatric Intensive Care Unit where children with more intensive problems are required to be placed under this in intensive care units. So that is intensive care is defined as a service for patients with a potentially recoverable disease who can benefit from detailed observation and treatment. Those patients who are having a critical problem but those diseases can be recovered by providing them a proper observation and treatment with the help of this placing this, those children in the pediatric intensive care units and this usually requires a highly trained multidisciplinary team with a specialized tertiary experts and diagnostic equipments. So here goes the definition of PICU it is the section of hospital that provides that provides highest level of medical care to the sick children so usually for what type of problems the children are brought to this intensive care unit is respiratory failure unstable airway inability to oxygenate inability to ventilate loscoboma score is less than 8 and status epilepticus and acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, shock, trauma, congenital heart disease, cancer chemotherapy, organ transplants and poisoning. So these are the common indications for placing the child under the intensive care unit. So they have asked you for the organization, structure and the infrastructures of the PICU then you should write this. So you should describe the PICU under this point that is uh, unit design, equipment, organization staffing, ancillary supports and levels of PICU care and discharge. So unit design is the unit should be located near to the lift with easy access for the emergency department, operation theater, laboratory and radiology department and the doctor duty room and office should be close to the PIC units and other facilities should also be near to these areas. And family waiting area should also be preferable be provided and they should also have provisions for like bathroom, shower, telephone facilities. Next under the infrastructure you should write about the size of PICU it is usually 6 to 10 beds. It is usually 6 to 10 beds we are going to provide for every PICU and especially for those pediatric ward having a bed up to 25 and room and layout room layout and bed area it should uh, open PI should PICU should have 150 to 200 square feet a minimum of 200 to 250 square feet with at least one was basin for two beds 
and isolation capability with the square feet of 250 and separate area of at least 20 square feet for hand washing and separate ventilation should be there and easy access of the head end of the patient for emergency hairway management wall and ceiling should be constructed with the materials with high sound absorption capabilities and also they sh the wall oxygen outlet should have two airlets and also two suction outlets should be there next is power supply and treat temperature control here uh, it should be equipped with the centrally air conditions and central heating for temperature control along with uninterrupted power supply backup power sources should be there and next is about the beds it should have a manure of head end and food end and availability of two or more air and water mattress should be there to prevent bed sores and each bed should have an emergency alarm button they should also be crash cart with emergency drugs and portable monitor defibrillator should be there there should be one central station which will have a provision for visibility of all the patient areas and have all the capacities necessary for staff functions patient records should be easily available here and also there should be an adequate space for computers printers and central monitors is essential next is x-ray weaving area should be there with an illuminated weaving box for weaving this films and storage area should be available for storage for all the vital supplies and also there should be a provision for all the care equipments and also there should be extra first provisions for providing the stretchers and wheelchairs next there should also be provision for clean and dirty utility room and also waste disposable provision should be there where there should be a mechanism for disposal of the contaminated waste and also there should be an adequate disposal of needle sharp objects as per the guidelines provided by pollution control board and also there should be a conference room a room for interventionist and staff for education and also they should have a provision for discussion uh, for difficult cases and other necessary meetings next they should also have a stat laboratory a mini laboratory with all the types of basic blood analysis like abg electrolyte blood sugar levels urea creatinine tomoplastin complete blood count and urine examination should be there adjacent to the pico and 24 by 7 it should be available on site next is staffing pattern and organization you should write here that is there should be one medical director and inventist total of total of five uh, in charges will be there and these are the persons who are trained in the area of pediatrics and experience in critical care and also they should have the responsibilities for establishing policies and protocols for pediatric consultation subspecialists nursing directors laboratory and black blood bank representatives and also for smooth functioning of PICU, picu they should have the, the implementation of policies related to admission and discharge next one is they also have should have the provision for quality assurance and improvement next is staffing requirements as i already told you there should be a medical staff round the clock and the postgraduate level and they should be well uh, trained up in a advanced life support skills and also they should have the advanced life support skills certification from a pediatric centers and they should be a nursing staff who is a uh, who is trained uh, for I icu purpose and also for the pediatric patients and for uh, very stable patients who are means in other words unventilated patients require one nurse for two to three patients for unstable patients require two nurses for one patient so this is about the staffing pattern for PICO and if they are asking for 10 marks you should write all this organization infrastructure and the staffing requirements so friends uh, I've come I'm going to end up with this video with this three important 10 mark questions and we will see the remaining questions in the forthcoming videos 
Thank you. If you do like this video, please do like, share and comment. Thank you.